Hey, what's up guys? I am Joe from Workbench and today we're going to go over a way to make a user interface interaction with a cursor using our own cursor. So the first thing I'm going to do is move down 20 frames in the timeline. Just give us some headroom and I'm going to hit B to bring the work area bar there. Then I'm going to go and drag this out all the way to the end to give us some time. Then I'm going to click on the cursor and I'm going to hit Y to get the pan behind tool to move the anchor point. I'm going to grab that and then I'm going to hit command to lock it to the corner somewhere around there. I think it's also locked into that shape too. That's good enough. So I'm going to hit V. I'm going to go back out to 50% here so I can get outside the comp, drag that down. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and move it to the center and take this one and move it to the center. So I'm going to hit window, open up motion sketch. It might come in funky like this for some reason. Just drag this down and you might have background turned off, but you're going to want to turn that on. Otherwise you won't see any of this stuff. Then we're going to click start capture. And you're going to see the cursor is going to turn to a crosshair. That means it's ready to go. So we're going to click on this, move it up here, pause for a second, move over, pause for a second, move over, pause for a second, move over here, pause for a second, move back down. Got to make sure you leave it a little bit of time in between so that when you pick up stuff and put it back down, it's going to look natural. Let's play that real quick, see how that moves. Probably go a little faster, but that'll work for now. All right, so what we're going to do is go to the first time it lands on the thing. And right here, we're going to keyframe a couple of things. As you can see, I have invert on here. It's under channel invert on the effects menu. I'm going to click blend with original. I have it set to 100% already. Yours is probably set to zero. And then you can do toggle hold keyframe. Move that to the beginning. And then go over here, hit zero. And at the same time, we're going to change the scale here. So I'm going to also do that as a hold keyframe. Move that down, beginning, 70% here. Then we're going to take the clock there. And we're going to chop that up right there. We're going to hit shift command D to split the layer. And we're going to parent this to the cursor. So that'll move with it. And what we're going to do is we're also going to scale this down too. So that's going to go from 50. We're going to put it down to 40. So as you can see, it gets on there. It clicks it down and then it's going to move back over here. And we're going to have to move that above the book layer. It's going to move over there. And then right about this area, we're going to set this keyframe to a hundred. Set that back up to 80. Chop the clock again. Set this to none. Hit P to bring up the position. Set that to 960, 540. So that it goes back into the center. It should look like that. Pop. All right. So then we're just going to move over to the next one. It's going to go over there. It's going to be about the time it picks up the next one. So we're going to set this to zero. Set that back down to 70. We're going to chop the battery right there. Parent it to the cursor. Change its scale back down to 40. Wait for it to move over there. About that area is when we're going to drop it again. So this time I'm going to copy these two keyframes. Copy, paste them in there. I'm going to chop this off right there. Set that back to none. Hit P again. Up to 960, 540. Enter. Click that down, move it over, drop it. Click that down, move it over, drop it. So I feel like that last one is a little quick. It grabs it and then it moves like super fast afterwards. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my work area to here. Make sure I'm on my cursor layer. I'm going to hit start capture again. And that's going to overwrite basically this section right in here. So I'm going to hold that there for a second, move it over, and then drop it down. So then we got to just adjust some stuff in here. Move this over, move that over there. Cut that off right there. Should be right there. Don't want any overlap. Let's bring that out. Set this here and play it. Probably could chop that in a little bit quicker. We could probably take this off of here too. It can happen a little faster. Let's move this down. While that might not be as fast as using a motion path, it's a lot more natural and it actually works the way you would. If you want to, you can change your capture speed setting so that you can be a little faster or you have more time to move things. But you can also just play around with the keys at the end. And that's pretty much it, guys. If you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And make sure you follow us on workbench.tv for more great tutorials. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.